I don't know if you've seen a, you know, Christian Nandini. She was a huge preacher in the Grihasta yes, vision yes. team. Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard her tell her story about how that family met Prabhupada. Sorry, which one are you? They're black, you know, so-called black. I mean the right article. There's no black people. There's only dark skin, you know. Okay. And it's not the people. There's no white people. It's all the skin color only. And we're too much absorbed in skin color. It's uh, difficult to overcome. But anyway, her mother, they were very, very religious. And they had been going to different Christian and not being satisfied. And the mother, I don't know, somehow she was writing to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was writing back. She gave herself a spiritual name and Prabhupada used it in dealing with her. Then the temple president where they were in Cleveland said they couldn't stay at the temple. So they just packed their car up with about six or seven people and drove and drove and drove without knowing where they're going. And they got to Dallas. And okay. temple president said, you can't stay here, you know. This, and they begged him. They said, "We, you know, we have no place. Left. And so he said, okay, one night. This is a family of about six or seven colored people in Dallas, Texas. So then they found out Prabhupada was coming the next day. They had no idea. They thought Prabhupada was in India. So they got really excited. So the next day, the mother went and demanded, I want to see Prabhupada. And they were trying to keep her away, you know, like they tried to keep everybody away in those days. Prabhupada found out. He said, no, he knew her. He knew her by name. And he said, what do you want? And she said, I want to get, you know, my family initiated. And Prabhupada initiated five of them right on the spot. Really? This is what they are? Testing, you know. We don't know them. Nobody knows them. Prabhupada said, no. Gave them all initiation. And they all still devotees. And Krishna Nandini has 10 kids who are all devotees. And... Oh, I didn't know that story. That's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. You can look it up on the internet. <laughs> she tells it. So, so what you are saying by this is that, uh, that Prabhupada focused on the... He might have said things, you know, okay. I calculate a lot of the things he said is because people feel that way. Like he said, even the black Africans are becoming devotees. But he was not against it. He liked, he loved the Africans to become devotees. But he would say that because people have this idea that they're so uncivilized. So he was just trying to show how powerful the process is. Even the Chinese, even people, they can't believe it, you know. People have so much prejudice. So he was saying things and... But, you know, you can't find any group of race or where everybody's the same, you know, there's good and bad people everywhere. All right. So yeah. that's amazing. So this so you so if you we... and Prabhupada was like that everywhere. He just and he wanted the local people. And so so if so when I, he so preached to people, he didn't he didn't think in America these hippies and they're all stoned and they've been having illicit sex and how can they be devotees? He just said, this is the spirit soul that wanted to hear about Krishna. And he got right through to the soul immediately. So, so what you're saying is that, that Prabhupada focused on, so if you want to continue Prabhupada's legacy or continue Prabhupada's mission, more than the letter of, more than the literal letter of whatever he has said, we need to have that spirit of compassion and connection. That is love. what we, Love, kindness, 